Well, good morning and w welcome to Monday Morning Maths. Um, I'm June Wilkinson and I'm joined by my colleague Ashley Hollingdale this morning. And I'm not sure if you've undertaken the uh, pre-work that was done, but um, it's not absolutely necessary that you, you've done it. So um, I'll come on to that in a minute. So I'm just going to share my, my screen with you. So bear with me. Right, so... Um, so... Um, Bound construction, you may not have heard of bound construction, um, but um, if you are um, in either Chilton Hills Academy or St Michael's School in Aylesbury, or if you're in Bucks UTC, then you will be sitting in one of the schools that we've built. Or if you are in Amersham and have been passing the station, then our civil engineering arm is um working at the station at the moment or indeed is building the new leisure center so in buckinghamshire you'll have, you'll have come across our work whether you you know about it or not so it's not necessarily a household name for you but let me tell you a little bit about who we are so bam construction uk is part of a, a parent organization called royal bam we operate through um 10 companies throughout the world in 30 different countries and you'll see one of our projects um, in Antwerp on the screen there and we employ about 20,000 people throughout the world so we're a big big company and not only do we do uh, build things that's the construction side but we manage properties as well that we've built we civil engineering is all of your tunnels railways um, ports etc that's what civil engineering does um, and in the UK, we employ about two and a half thousand roughly um, employees across England, Scotland and Wales. And we build, um, we don't build houses, um, we build um, schools, hospitals, we're currently building the, uh, just finishing off the new uh, cardiac unit for Southampton General Hospital. We built the um, Nightingale um, Hospital uh, in Harrogate and at Exeter. And we're just about to start some new um, COVID testing centres as well for hospitals. But as well as that, we do build offices um, and uh, shops as well, uh, shopping centres. And um, Ashley will tell you a little bit in a while about what, what he's currently working on. So not only do we have construction, which is the um, building side, we design buildings, we have BAM design. So we have architects um, working um, in the design department, actually designing buildings. Services engineering, which is everything that goes into a building to make sure that it can be can be worked. So you might build the, the roof, the, the floor, the, the walls, but you'll have um, things that need to go into that building. So you'll have gas, electricity, water, all of those are what we call services engineering, which have to be designed and then installed to make sure that the building can be used. And once the building's been built, then it needs to be maintained, it needs to be managed. So we have a whole um, facilities management company um, that will look after a building if we're asked to do so. But if we build schools, we might be asked to run the catering and the um, cleaning, but also the management of those buildings as well. But today, construction isn't just about putting bricks on top of each other. It's about how sustainable that building can be, how environmentally friendly it can be during the design of it and then during the construction of it and how environmentally friendly that building is going to be going forward. So that's that's who we are in the UK. So talking about your maths lesson now. So developing logical and systematic thinking is a vital element of maths. Being able to do something and repeat it in a logical way is, is important. So if you did complete the counters um, activity, you will have had to have remembered what you did so that you can repeat it. Um, and that's, that, that's a really good part of maths and it's a really good part of what, how we work in construction. Planning is really important and that's what we really call logistics. So recording your strategies and forward planning is important important in mathematics, but it's something we use in construction every day. Working efficiently and logically, wasting time. You may have heard the saying, time equals money. So if we waste time, then we can lose money in construction because we could be 
waiting around for things to happen or maybe not doing things in the most efficient way, which actually ends up costing us money and means that we don't make money, which means that we, we lose it. So we're going to do a simple exercise. So if you've got your cards to hand. Right, so this is the activity that we're going to do. So completing processes without wasting time is important at work. As I've said, we call this logistics. So with your cards, Oh, what I'd like you to do is make a cup of tea using those cards, put them in a logical order. So I'm going to give you just a couple of minutes in your either individually or in your teams to put those cards in a logical order. Off you go. So over to the students now, hopefully teachers are supporting them with that task. Any problems at all? Do put into the chat box any questions that you might have whatsoever. Um, how long do they have for this task? I They've wanna... got two minutes. So... Two minutes, OK. Yep. Are you on the stopwatch, uh, June, or am I? I am indeed, yeah. There we go, there the stopwatch going. Stopwatch going as well. Now, hopefully, you all know how to make a cup of tea. I'm not sure if I did in year nine, actually, I'll be honest. I remember it was. <laughs> It was the first, th first thing we did in what used to be called domestic science when I was at school, probably called food technology now. First thing we had to do was make a cup of tea. So looking at all the cards except the grey one. Yep, put the grey one aside because we're going to use that in a moment. We've just got another teacher uh, joining. Um, let me just quickly um, bring her into it. Um, Miss Hinge, uh, Miss Hinge, hopefully you can you can hear that. Um, we're just getting going on the first task at the moment. So if you want to make sure that your students have their cards um, for the exercises, and um, we've just kicked off with the first exercise, but June will be um, speaking in a second because it's just coming towards the, the end of the first exercise. Yep, so another 30 seconds. OK, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So hopefully you've now got them in some sort of order. So let me let me have a look. And so this is what your cards looked like originally. Uh, they're all mixed up, so we're not using that grey one. So this is the order I put them in. So it takes 30 seconds to fill the kettle. So we need the kettle filled up with water and switch it on. And then the next thing is we need to wait for the kettle to boil, which takes three minutes and then 15 seconds to put the tea bags in the teapot or cup. <laughs> um, and then it takes 30 seconds to pour the water. These are obviously all rounded up as as figures. You may do it quicker. You may take a little bit longer, but, you know, work with me on this. So 30 seconds to pour the water from the kettle into the pot. And then you would need to leave the tea to brew for two minutes before you can pour it. And then 30 seconds to add sugar to two of the cups because only two people want sugar. And then it takes one minute to get the milk from the fridge and to put it into the cups. And then it takes one minute to pour the four teas and stir the cups with sugar. OK, so um, this is this is the sequence. This is the sequence. So if we were to do it in that sequence. Can anybody add up how long it would take? So can you put your answers on the chat, Chris? Can you tell me? Because I can't see the chat on while well, I've got my screen up. So Absolutely. see if anybody's got an answer. Teachers, if you could get some answers from your classes and put them on the chat. OK, I'll be reading out the answers to you. OK. Don't ask me what the right answer is, though, whatever. Yeah, you... I've got the right answer, so you're all right. <laughs> OK, we've got 10 minutes, 45 seconds. OK, first one in. Any me. advance on that? 10 minutes, 45 seconds. Well done for getting in there first, you guys. 8.45. Oh, a little bit more, yeah. OK, one more. Nine fifteen. Okay. Eight forty-five. 
So let me let me show you. So the answer is eight mm -hmm. minutes forty five seconds. Did we had one class said that, didn't we? You got it. Um, yeah. The initials IT and the initials AC and NC NK coming in. So three got eight eight forty five, but NK was maybe a little bit too late. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. Well done. So um, could we could we make this quicker? So the idea is, could we do things um, at the same time? So now have a look at your cards and rearrange them, looking at the amount of time it's taking to do some things. Can you do other things at the same time? So rearrange your cards, giving you just a, a minute to do this. Rearrange your cards so that you're perhaps doing things at the same time. So put the cards underneath each other. Off you go. June, just to recap there for those who might need it, explaining again. Yep, so you've got um, you've got your cards which you've put in a, a linear order. What I'd like you to do now is take some of those cards and see if there's anything you can be doing while you're waiting for something else to happen. The additional time would be about two minutes max for the tea to brew. Just one comment. Okay. So you've got just 30 seconds left on this now. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Excellent. OK, so let's see how you got on. Dismiss my timer. OK, so again, it's taking 30 seconds to put the kettle on. Um, but whilst your kettle is boiling, you could be getting the milk from the fridge and putting it into the cups. And you could be used. Um, you could be putting the tea bags into the teapot because those two items are only taking one minute and 15 seconds. So you're using that three minutes while you're sat waiting for the kettle to boil. And then you can put the kettle uh, water in the kettle, in the pot rather. And whilst your two minutes are brewing, you could be putting the two minutes, you could be putting the sugar in the cups and your one minute for your to make your um, cups of tea. So if we do that, we actually have an answer of seven minutes. So we've actually saved ourselves one minute and 45 seconds by using that time that uh, we were waiting. Now that might not sound a lot, one minute, 45 seconds, that doesn't sound a lot. But if we were to put that into weeks, rather than um, eight minutes eight and a half weeks, it was only taking seven weeks. That's a considerable amount of time that we've saved um, in the construction process. So now um, what's going to happen is you've got that grey card and somebody wants another cup of tea. So add in that grey card into your process and see whether it's going to take you longer to make the, that second cup of tea because you've got to wash the cups up. So I'm just going to give you a minute to do that. Add that grey card into the into the process and see where it needs to go and whether it's going to take you longer. Off you go. You've got one minute. And a, a shout out to the class of initials AC. They got seven minutes as the right answer. Well done. Fantastic. Well done, that, that class. Can you get this? One minute. June is giving us a, a hard, hard Monday morning. That's for sure. Yes. <laughs> but a testing one. It's good. But hopefully you can just slide the cards around so it's not too difficult to 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 get where you need to go to. So looking for the grey card, is that right this time? Yes, yeah, so you've got a grey card. Um, it's the one I think that says something along the lines of you've got to wash up and make a second cup of tea or something like that. Slightly only, different colour. Only in England would we do um, a good half an hour on making cups of tea. Eh? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So you've got eight seconds, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So, right. So this is what um, I came up with. So 30 seconds to 
um, boil your kettle again. Whilst your kettle is boiling, you can use two of that to wash up the cups. You can still put the tea bag in the teapot. Um, so you're using that time up there and then carrying on. We've used the time when we're waiting, waiting for the tea to brew. And we've got our one minute at the end. So has anybody come up with an answer to how long this will take us? Just put it on the chat to teachers if you can get some answers and put it on the chat for me. Have you got any answers yet, Chris? No answers yet. Oh. Here we go from MP. Depending on the amount of water required, 300 millilitres per cup. <laughs> The time to film would take less than 30 seconds. It would, but we've said that these are our, these are our standard times. <laughs> Push back from June now, I'm afraid. MP. Yeah, yeah. Some people always do things a little bit quicker. Some people will take a little bit longer, probably de depending on the pressure of your water. That's OK, good. so we've got an answer. Anybody we've got seven got an minutes answer? from AC. Yes. OK, so the answer is still only seven minutes. Seven um, minutes, MB, LM, seven minutes. They're coming through. They got it. Excellent. So um, it's because you've been efficient with your time. You've used um, the, two, the time when you were waiting for that kettle to boil to um, wash your cups up. And you've used the time when you were waiting for the tea to brew to do some other items as well. So we've, we've saved time. So I'm now going to introduce you to my colleague, Ashley Hollandale. He is um, a project planner. So he's going to tell you a little bit about himself and what his, um, how he got into doing his job. Um, um, so he's uh, just finished the first part of his apprenticeship, but I'll, t I'll hand you over to him now to, um, to talk. Um, Ashley, shall I leave, I'll leave this up um, yes, for people please, to yeah. see. Is that okay? All right, off you go. Yeah. Good morning all. So my name is Ashley Hollandale. I'm a project planner um, for BAM Construction uh, in the UK. I left school 12 years ago in 2008 uh, with not really much of a clue what I was going to do. Uh, probably sat in uh, some of your positions right now uh, thinking that as well. Um, fundamentally, over the last 12 years, I have held a few different positions. From about 2010 onwards, I started to understand that I wanted to get into the world of construction. Wasn't entirely sure how I was going to do it. So I got, uh, I put myself out there really and got a, a role just labouring on site and, and started to, to work my way into the construction world that way. Um, fast forwarding uh, a few years to 2017, I joined BAM as an assistant planner. I'd had a few years on site working in various sort of um, junior roles, uh, working through theory and investment behind construction, so lots of number crunching and sort of working through feasibility studies and things like that, looking from the investment standpoint and the theory behind construction. I joined, as I say, BAM in 2017 uh, as an assistant planner and they supported me in gaining further education that I hadn't done before. So I left uh, Fast going back, I did leave uh, college in 2010 and didn't attend university. So when I was uh, it, when I started with BAM, I didn't have any formal qualifications in construction. I just had my experience to date, and that was what they sort of hired me on the basis of. BAM have now supported me through my level four apprenticeship, as June has said, uh, and I've been uh, subsequently promoted to planner as well. Um, and in the next couple of years, will likely be a senior planner. So whilst I am in the in the, the construction management ranks, uh, I am technically still an apprentice because I'm still learning whilst earning. Now, um, I'm probably the uh, the best one of the best examples in construction of applying maths every day to my job. I quite literally work out exactly how you've just done with a cup of tea. Uh, how is the most efficient and quickest way of getting from the start of the build to the end of the build in the least amount of time possible? So I apply rates and theories and numbers to everything from how we dig into the ground for foundations to how we lay the bricks, to how we pour concrete, to how we paint walls. And we apply 
a theory against each of those activities and it gives me an overall duration for the job uh, and that's my job. Um, a project planner isn't something you've probably heard of before, it's a bit of a, 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 a hidden um, trade behind others. You've probably heard of project managers and site managers. Planners are the guys who decide how we're going to build it and the time it will take. So that is my role. At the moment, I'm working on two major projects uh, in the south, one in Haven on the south coast and one in Oxford city centre. Both of them are pretty decent size, uh, 12 million pound in value on the one on the left that you can see and 38 million for the one in Oxford. Uh, 45 weeks and 88 weeks um, is, the, is the target duration that I've decided for those projects uh, and we run to a program that I've created uh, to get to that point. Um, they're, they're both interesting projects um, and, and really uh, are, are both currently running uh, completely on, on program to deliver uh, it in the duration that we have decided. Um, in terms of, uh, of, of how we how we come to that, there's lots of lots of spreadsheets and things like that that sit behind the theory, uh, working out how many how many days it will take to lay 100 meters of block uh, block work, or how many days it will take to um, bit the one on the right hand side there is a concrete frame, uh, how many how many weeks it's taken to pour the concrete and build up to the fifth floor and things like that, and that's how we how we get to the the duration shown. Um, that that that's pretty much my my job role that's great that's great Ashley it's Thank so good you. to hear I'm um, oh, sorry June over to you yeah no, that's fine so um the kind of skills that we look for in the industry are communication that's not just being able to talk talk to people that could be writing reports writing emails reading reports pre presenting as well just being good with people in the construction industry you need to have good teamwork being good with people being organized and planning your time now, these are all things that you can you practice at school every day and you probably don't even realize it. So, you know, when a teacher asks you to get um, into small groups, you know, just being prepared to get on and work with other people, organized um, and planning, you know, turning up to class with the right equipment on time. That's all part of it. And what we've shown today is problem solving. That that's really what we do. How are we going to do this? Um, and then having um, a systematical way of doing that. Do you so, have a couple of questions oh, for Ashley? Oh, yeah, that's fine. Um, I'll, okay. I'll give two seconds and then we just finish this and then we'll go to the questions. So as Ashley said, there are different types of apprenticeships. Um, we take people at 16 and 18. Maths is vital to getting onto an apprenticeship. Whatever apprenticeship you go into, you will need your maths and English. Um, in construction, if you're going to come in and do a degree apprenticeship, you will need a STEM A-level. So a science, technology, engineering or maths A-level to be able to do that. And as Ashley said, um, it's a case of learning and earning. So our, our um, apprentices go to university for um, a month at a time for two months of the year and the rest of the time they're working, um, learning their jobs. So now we're over to questions. So, Chris, did you say you got a couple of questions? Yeah, absolutely. From Miss Bond, could Ashley explain how he studies his apprenticeship? Uh, ah. okay. So I am a little bit of an except. But uh, guys, I am a lot older. I'm 28. And the reason that BAM supported me through, I, 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 you know, I could have gone down the route of continuing on with my uh, sort of experience today, and that probably would have carried me so far, but there would have been a ceiling, there would have been a, a limit to that uh, without the, gaining the formal qualifications. It would have either been myself that would have had to fund it and, and, and gain those qualifications at some point, or, um, or quite frankly, really fortunate that BAM has supported me in doing it. So I um, I study my apprenticeship in the same uh, way as the younger apprentices that were brought on in an apprenticeship role do. So they were brought on to uh, learn the, the, learn their job role on site. Uh, so if they're a site manager, they spend their time on site for the majority of, of the time, and then they do the month away, as June has explained, twice a year. So a month up at, up at university, uh, attending lectures, etc. I'm a little bit of an exception as I say I, I have a, uh, a permanent job role in the fact that I am a planner so I have lots of responsibilities so I have to be a bit more acute about how I juggle uh, my job with uh, with learning but I do go and do my month away um, I just find that I'm uh, it's, I spend my evenings working on, on my day job um, it's it's no different to anyone else having a uh, doing a part-time degree alongside their job 
uh, it's the same same principle. And, and, and Ashley, uh, what time were you when you? Uh, how old were you when you started your apprenticeship? Uh, it was three years ago, so I was twenty-five. There we go, because the message is that you can start an apprenticeship from 16, but but now there's any age you can start it. So you could be 50 and start the same apprenticeship yeah. that, that you started, um, which is there, great. Just, there I've is got, guys yeah. that, are, that are older than me uh, that, that I've seen uh, doing exactly the same degree as me. That's so interesting. And actually, I've got one from Miss Clark here in her class. What do you love uh, most about your job, Ashley? Um, I, I, I explain this sometimes to, to people um, that when I walk... The job that I'm doing, the one earlier on that was on the screen on the right hand side, the big one, 38 million pound project, it is walking up uh, Oxford High Street and seeing the building going up. Uh, and that kind of uh, kind of uh, understanding that I've decided how we're going to build that. And it's a, it's a big, um, it, it feels amazing to, to think that how far I personally have come to be in the position that I am to be doing that. Um, I, I never thought I would be able to. I certainly, when I was sat at school, didn't think I had the, the math skills to be able to do it um, and, and probably didn't understand uh, that I'd be using it as much as I have in my real world job. Um, but I do literally every day. And it's exactly the same principle of what you've just done with a cup of tea. I do that every day, but with millions of pounds worth of of concrete, steel, timber, and, and and all the rest of it, and it's it's it, it's it's amazing seeing something go up in the middle of the city centre and and having having that self satisfaction that you've you've, you've achieved that. That's and what I love about it, and and it is it's instant results as well. You, you see something physically coming out of the ground. It's it's amazing. And that's where maths can take you. Actually, brilliant. Um, teachers, any comments, please, in the chat box because we finished the session now. Any sort of takeaways from your students? Did they find that useful? Uh, did it help inspire students to take maths on to the next level? Uh, June, any any final comments from you? No. All I'd say is that um, you know, continue with your maths. You know that they will take you. If you find it difficult, ask your teachers. You know that's always my um, recommendation. If you're finding something tough. Teachers, sh shut your ears at the moment. That's what they get paid for. You know, if you're not quite sure about maths, ask again. Keep asking, keep practicing, and you will get there, I promise you. Well done. Brilliant. Thanks so much to Band Construction. Thank you, everyone, for joining. You're welcome. Have a good day. Bye bye.